All right, so I'm tearing apart this uh, 05 Kawasaki STX 900. Uh, the pump I had apart when I first bought it, and I basically took all the bent rings on the propeller and uh, straightened them the best I could, and then took all the burrs off of the ends of it from hitting rocks and stuff. Um, but it still doesn't propel out of the water like I'd like it to. I mean, it just may be because it's a 900, but I did buy a new propeller and a new wear ring, and we're going to install those today. Took the cover off. It's just a bunch of 5 millimeter Allen bolts, and uh, took a linkage up here. This linkage for your reverse bucket, you just slide that collar back and then pop that off of the little connecting rod there. And then uh, your turning cable, that's just a 10 millimeter bolt. And you just take that off of here. And then there's a couple hoses you gotta get off right there. And then a third one there. And then four bolts. I think after those four bolts, the whole jet drive pulls out. So we'll get back to you once we get that off. All right, so four 14 millimeter bolts, pull that out, uh, and then just yank the jet drive out. Sometimes it'll seize up on your uh, input shaft right there. When I had it apart last, it took a long time to get it off. Um, I think I hit it with a hammer a few times, but that'll come off and then Next time you put it back together, grease it up really well with some marine grease, and that'll help help it come off the next time. So this is the new wear ring and um, propeller, impeller, whatever they call them. And as you can see, there's it's touching on most spots. There's a slight gap, whereas this one has got a gap all the way around it, which you should have a gap all the way around, but it should be a lot tighter than what this one is. This one's all chewed up, as you can see. Galled up from rocks and sand and trash. Uh, these were bent over before. Uh, I, s I bent them back. This one was actually cracked. I bent them back and then polished them down with the sander and then filed them on the back side. They held up okay, but they're definitely... This one's bent over some more yet. This one's got a little bit there. I must have gotten into a little bit of gravel or something out in the river but the bearings are still good in it and uh it's tight so i'm gonna just swap out the impeller and the wear ring i think that wear ring i can just cut out if i take a die grinder maybe or sawzall and start it and then get a chisel actually i might just be able to get a chisel behind it and then just bend it out we'll see I've got a tool, a spline tool, that'll go inside this impeller and uh, be able to use an impact on the other side or maybe use an impact on this, I don't remember. We'll get it apart though. Spin, Dad. Well, that would make it run not near as fast. There's a big old rock stuck in there. So, I'm glad we're doing this. So, to split the case, it's four 12 millimeter bolts. And then it just comes apart. There's no gasket. Um, last time it was corroded really bad, so I sanded everything down and it came right apart this time. Yeah, here's this rock. Pretty good size one. She's lodged in there, so that's gonna be fun. Probably gonna have to beat it out once I get the impeller back off. I think I'll pull these off this cone. It's packed full of grease for your bearings. Yep, they're 10 millimeter. Here, this will work. Uh, here's a hammer. Plus I already had two o over here. Hmm.
I don't remember if it's threaded on or if it just presses on and they use a hex on it. Oh, that's threaded. And there's a, uh, looks like there's a shaft. At the end of the shaft is there. I should be able to just pop this right off, I think, but oh, I should be able to just pop this right off. Uh, you got a pry bar handy, Charlie? Oh, yeah. You got yeah. smaller pry bars? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that might be a little bit better. Just need to get something in there. Um, Dad? Mm -hmm. Here's a hammer to help. That's all right, that's the work. I'll just give you this hammer. Okay. So what was the point of so taking her why, in? Then why do I have to take her back to get stitches removed? Is what I I think they just have poor communication there. Uh, oh, I damaged it, Charlie. Darn it. Just a little bit. We can file it down. Okay. Just from where I hit the pry bar in once. Wait, did I say damn it or darn it? Darn it. No Why? Because damn it's a bad word. Oh. <laughs> Bye. 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 Love you too. That rock is lodged in there good. I think I'll have to break it out. Here. I've got an idea. Instead of a Phillips. Well, I don't want to break it out right now because it's not in the way. Let's take it over to the vise and get the impact with that tool. Okay. Can... Alright, so we got her in the vise. The bearings are good. Ain't nothing wrong with them. We just got it clamped on that rod. And we're gonna take. Good deal. Where's that socket at, buddy? All right, so this is what I bought. Impeller tool, there's part number. Um, that's what it looks like there. Twenty three millimeter is what fits that. Put a specialty <coughs> chrome impact socket on the fourteen hundred foot pound impact gun. Don't want to break none of those black sockets. I don't remember if this is reverse thread or what. Well, the internet says it's normal threads, so we're gonna try that. I don't know. Did not break loose. And so far, she ain't broken loose, so we're gonna try a breaker bar. Cause I don't remember how I got this to come off last time, but Feel like it came off easier than that. There we 
go. I guess the breaker bar is the way to go. Maybe I shouldn't have greased the threads. Man, that wire ring is horrible. All right, I'm gonna compare this to the oh, to the new impeller. Make sure it's right. It's a Solus. KG dash CD twelve eighteen. Twelve eighteen pitch. So I think I got the same exact one for it. Concord, Solus, here we go. Yep, same thing. Make sure the threads are the same. Yeah, they look the same, so. They, uh, it's much sharper, much sharper. A lot better. Hopefully, better for propulsion, anyway. I don't know. It's only the second jet ski I've ever been on. First one was a 160 horse Sea Dew, I think. So, this thing seems like a turd in comparison, but it should. It should be better than what it is. It only runs like 42, 45 if you're like laying down on it. And it's kind of slow to get there. So. If I find out where this thing ends, it looks like clear down here. Yeah, it ends clear down there. So. That looks like it's the same size. I guess we'll get to cutting and prying on this. Get that rock out of there while we're here. Well, I got the, uh, I got chisel and beat it to the side. And I've got vice grips on it. I'm going to wiggle it back and forth as I beat a chisel down in there. And try not to damage this housing. And try to rip it this way and then it'll pop right out so after trying several methods I found out the best way to do this is to take your chisel punch it in between the, actually pry it out first grab that lip pry it out like a quarter inch take your sharp chisel go down about half an inch pry out with your hand and then cut it so go on it like that and cut it and then pry out or hammer down again pry out cut it and then as you keep it going along like that it seems to be doing a pretty decent job without marring up the edge too much there i got her cut all the way so now i should be able to just pry it out easier said than done Still seized in there pretty good, but. Mm. 
Might be corroded into the case too. Might be what I'm fighting. I need two hands. Okay, so the factory wear ring has a pinhole right there that goes into the factory case. Um, I don't think the new one has that. So, I'm probably just going to grind off that pinhole. Unless, maybe I can mark it on this one. I just don't know if I can drive it in there and then get it bent back in. I, I'm going to have to grind off that pinhole. Or that pin. Which isn't a big deal. And there's really, the corrosion in here isn't bad at all. I did mar it up a little bit there. But I can grind that off. Smooth it out. There's definitely some uh, indentation all the way along there from that wear ring being that bad. I mean, it was, you can see here where it ate some rocks into the side of it really deep. Ended up grinding them into this. So, put that new wear ring in. That housing's not junk. And then uh, put the impeller back on. And ground that pin tab off, and then <clears throat> I filed down where I had damaged the side, which wasn't bad. It was less damage than what this is. And then I sanded it all down with 150 grit sandpaper. Um, I'm gonna try driving this ring dry. And if that doesn't work, I'm gonna rub some marine grease on it. I'm gonna try pushing with my hands first and see how that goes and then drive it in with a block of wood. Well, that absolutely kicked my butt. I, uh, I got it in about three hours later. I had it in the freezer. It was helping just a hair, but not nearly enough. Um, I ended up grinding down the edge of the housing with a burr bit. And then polishing it out with a Rolock disc. And then I sanded the whole housing with more sandpaper. And that helped, but not enough. Every time I started with by hand, I'd use a rubber mallet on the edge to get the other the last edge in, and then it would pop. And the other the opposing side would pop out. So I finally put it in my press with a board on top of the ring and had it sitting there and I took a chisel and a hammer all the way around and slowly applied pressure with the press and finally got every last bit of it started and then I could press the whole thing in and it went but it took forever so it's still not a good ring I don't like the quality of it at all that's the weld on it and the weld's not bad it's just where they sectioned it together, they didn't make sure it was round afterwards, and so now there's a flat spot there, but I'll hit it with a ball peen a little bit, and then I think it'll be okay. This is the old, the old impeller, and you can see the gap that's around there. Pretty substantial. And if I put the new impeller in there, the gap is much less substantial. So, I'm happy with it. It should propel that ski out of the water like it's supposed to instead of just sludging along. So, we're going to put her back together and put her back on the machine. Take her out this week. Got her back in. We're going to go ahead and... These bearings are brand new as of uh, four hours ago. Um... Four hours of runtime. I put them on last fall when I had the pump apart before. And then I didn't have the parts and I wanted to ride the rest of the season. So I just fixed that old impeller and ran with the old wear ring. And after putting bearings in it, it did run good. It just, it didn't run near as good as it should. So I ran it for last season. And then uh, I put, like I said, I put the new bearings in it and they're solid. You can tell they're really solid i'm going to uh put this assembly back together 
All right, so I've greased all this uh, grease down in there so that next time this has to be taken apart, it'll come right out. I greased both sides of this uh, rubber gasket. Um, the first time I took it apart, it was insane. I didn't want to come apart at all without tearing. And so it was just built up with corrosion. Um, last time I greased it, this time I greased it. And I greased each one of these now too, where it mates. And then on the other side of this, I'm gonna grease where that metal mates the other metal. And that way everything comes apart easier later on. On trucks and stuff, I use a lot of, well, that would have been bad. I use a lot of NICs. And uh, on this, I'm just using like a marine grease. Um, just some cheap uh, Mystic high performance marine grease here. It's like five bucks and that'll last you a long, long time. So, if it saves a headache later on, it's well worth it, because everything should come apart, and uh, should be smooth sailing. Hammer, can you go get me a rubber mallet that's on top of that toolbox, I think? Or by the... Sure. It's just like that one. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to see the newer one. The second thing says made in USA. It's a good tool. I mean the river? Yeah, river is lake. The shaft came out of the coupler of the motor. Oh. Right now I'm fighting the shaft is too long at the moment. I might have to go up in there and... I think that's all the way in. All right, so yeah, I was fighting the uh, the shaft wasn't inside the coupler. It had pulled out when I pulled the pump out. Um, we're good now, we're bolted up. And uh, I got this hose on. I got these two hoses to install. They're getting kind of dry. Might have to replace those in the near future. They're getting kind of hard. Okay, hey, can you go steer it? Wait a minute, I'll tell you when. Okay, go ahead. Go left again. Yeah, it turns left a hair more than it turns right. Put the wheel straight. Is that perfectly straight? Yeah. So yeah, it turns left more than it turns right. I feel like that was an issue last year where I had to keep turning it just a hair right to go straight, like that. Is that a hair right? Uh, that's a lot. Is it? Okay. Well, I'm going to adjust it then. I think I can adjust it. 
Oh yeah, it's loose. I'm not sure. Okay, I think I gotta take it back off and twist it on. Okay, go back to straight. And then that's straight or no? Okay, what's perfectly straight on the wheel? Get it perfectly. Well, I can't do it perfectly, but I can do it really close. Pretty sure that's it. Well, anyway, you can adjust this by taking that nut loose and then taking this bolt out and then twisting this in or out to adjust your turn on your cable. We're headed to the water. <laughs> 